Billy has finally been named principal. Grace is struggling with her decision to move to Oakland or stay in Crenshaw. And JJ has had it with the entire friend group, as always. They're really ruining his vibes. What's good, y'all? So, yes, it's Erica Vane coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another All American video. And in this video, we are talking about episode number 19 from season four of All American. If you missed it, I did go live on Monday night after the show, after All American Homecoming, to do an All American Universe after show. And I would love it if you join me next week for the live after show for the season finale for both series. We chop it up, do live reactions. Reactions. I can answer a lot of y'all's questions. We can talk about different things that are really grinding our gears or the things that we are loving in the moment before I'm able to give you all these breakdown videos as well as these previews. So if you're new here, hit the subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications so you don't miss out on when I go live and you won't miss out on the finale of the All American Lives. Now, I honestly don't have much to say about this episode. This episode annoyed me uh y'all because a big part of it is asher and his struggle with spencer and how he just absolutely cannot with spencer after he took personal information about spencer back to his team and his coach as a part of a scouting report that he was supposed to do information that he would have never received had he not been living in the same household with spencer had he not had some type of familiarity and or friendship with spencer the same information that if the actual assistant coach of coastal california would have been tasked with the responsibility of scouting spencer would have never been able to include in his report because what it was personal information and for whatever reason asher is in his whole white man bag he's in his whole white privilege bag he's in his whole i am entitled to you automatically forgiving me and or looking the other way when i betray your trust and your friendship because what i'm asher and i have a beard now and i'm fine and i'm from beverly hills and i think i'm this and it just don't work like that so most of the episode was really about them it's at the top of the episode jj is trying to plan for his halloween party he wants them to help him move this ping pong table and we're seeing exactly how much tension that they actually have because they can't even coordinate to get this table out of one room and go into the next because spencer don't want to talk to asher and asher want to make his little slide passive aggressive remarks and the whole thing is giving ghetto honestly like the fact that we go through this episode and Asher's talking to Coop and Asher's talking to all these people about how Spencer just ain't it anymore and how Spencer was so easy to cut on and off their friendship and how they really aren't friends. Yes, y'all really aren't friends because at the end of the day, this man literally showed up for you every chance he, you gave him to shit on you. When he should have shitted on you, he actually showed up for you. And yet and still, you still turn around and betray him. And when you do so, instead of turning around and saying, you know what, I actually betrayed your confidence and trust and I'm sorry, you decide to go deeper into your entitlement bag and want to run here crying about how Spencer feels about you betraying his confidence. Asher, make it make sense. Like, I know that you've never really learned how to be a really great friend, but this ain't it. And I think that Asher's biggest problem with Spencer is that he's had this resentment that he's carried since he first met Spencer because Spencer took his position and took his girlfriend and did this and did that. All of the things that y'all try to put on Spencer's bill. But at the end of the day, had you not been a shitty ass boyfriend, like Spencer pointed out, you know, you cheated on one girl and you slut shamed the other. Had that never happened, maybe you could have kept one of those two girls. Uh, had you actually been a dope wide receiver, Spencer could have never slid in and, and been a a better one so all of those things that you're struggling with all those things that you're resenting Spencer for you really need to take up with Jesus in yourself because it has nothing to do with Spencer nobody's going to run around here and and dim their light and try not to shine a little bit brighter just because you're a dull ass bub and you want to be brighter and instead of working your behind off to be brighter you want just everyone else to be dimmer so that you can shine bright we ain't doing that especially not in 2022 so go ahead and wrap it up Asher we have officially thrown Asher back in the trash he's had his little moment in the sun his little glory moment after we learned about his heart condition we felt for him we empathized with him and all of that jazz but at the end of the day he is still a very entitled rich white man and we're good on him or at least i am i said what i said y'all can argue with y'all's mamas now aside from that they forced us to watch asher and spencer have this conversation about how asher feels like yeah you do betray me every time she turned around and you sold my girl and you did this and you did that again see all of my points that i made previously another thing i don't like about this episode or that i really really struggle with this episode is how jordan is now back in his whole bag completely he is now smashing random white women that he does not even realize well actually that is a step up because he does know that this is not the girl that he thought it was or he doesn't have the person's name wrong like he has in previous episodes and previous seasons in this episode he just didn't care the girl that he was smashing was unavailable so he went ahead and said you know what your roommate will do just fine because all i need is a vagina in this place so let's go ahead to the party jordan 
have we not grown at all? Have we not evolved at all? Has all of the time that you've spent with Simone, you've literally been with Simone now for at least a year, maybe 18 months, all of the growth and maturity that you have displayed in that relationship, was it literally only attached to Simone? Do, does your brain really not function in a mature, progressed, evolved place when you're no longer with this woman? Like that, this is the part that really, 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 really grinds my gears because it's very hard to celebrate people's progression forward or people's forward movement if the shit ain't real and it's given that it has not been real this entire time the fact that jordan baker is literally within weeks of a breakup from the biggest relationship the most intense relationship the most loving relationship that he has ever been in and he is back to smashing random white women as if this is season one or season two is beyond me the regression is real and swift and it and, and i hate that for us now in this episode jordan is talking to layla talking about he's running around here smashing all these women not because he's trying to prove that he's over simone but he's trying to prove that simone was wrong about him not being into layla and it's just like there's other ways that you could have did this one and two when did you figure out these feelings because at this point the way y'all moving so fast it wasn't just in that episode when Simone came back you had to already have been feeling those feelings and been lying about them because this is giving very much so visceral reaction this is giving very much so burning deeply in my soul and like pining for someone and I don't understand it the saving grace for me in this episode was watching Jordan profess his love for Layla and Layla sitting there looking very bewildered meant she looked very perplexed she looked very confused she looked very much so like sir pull up because you are trying to land this plane and I have not cued you or okayed you or approved you to land and I'm praying I am holding out faith that Lil Lele is going to reject Jordan and send him back to the land of single dumb and hoeing that he belongs in obviously because this relationship does not need to happen Layla needs to not smash any more homies and she she has definitely grown and is better than that and I think that she actually knows that so I am praying 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 that in the season finale that is what we're going to get because Lil Lord knows I do not want to see a Jayla. I really don't. And honestly, watching Jordan's very swift regression is just further proof that he does not deserve to be with Layla. Because if you can't even hold it together and like just sit with your feelings or fight with your feelings, and if you won't ghost her, be by yourself, bro. Like the fact that he is so easily able to just go start sticking his you know what in all these random women it's like this is what y'all want for layla all of y'all that are running around here shipping shipping jordan and layla this is what you want for layla this immature entitled now all of a sudden he's forgotten all the emotional awareness and emotional iq that he developed in his relationship with simone that no longer exists this is you want layla to start from scratch you want layla to go back in time and get the jordan that simone got yeah it's absolute hell no for me now in other news, as I mentioned, Billy becomes or finds out that he's going to become the permanent principal in this episode. Yay, Billy, you won. You got it. You better stick around and don't be trying to run and be some college coach or some professional football coach after all this that you dragged us through this entire season to talk about you really want to be principal. And then Grace is struggling with if she's going to move to Oakland or not. And I honestly, while I don't want to see Grace exit the show, I really think that it would be a great thing for her character. I think it would be dope for Dylan as well. I think it also will add a little bit of sauce to Spencer's story and like having his mother and his brother move away part of one of the things that I wanted Spencer to do if, in going away to college is like you get a very different perspective on life and you get to grow differently when you don't have all the creature comforts of like home around you in that particular state in life and I think that Grace moving away and basically like her being home like Crenshaw is always gonna be home but like her and Dylan being home and that not being there it's gonna add a new level of like independence that he's going to have to figure out and navigate around now there's tons of questions that y'all keep asking me about Olivia and Spencer and if they're going to make it I don't know but that will also be another level if Spencer and Olivia break up if Grace moves to Oakland all of these things start to shift maybe he moves back on campus that will set Spencer up to go into a very interesting season in his life where he's really focused on relying on himself he can't be super save a hoe for for everybody and everyone and he really just has to worry about bettering and saving himself I actually would love to see that so yeah that's my thoughts on that now olivia in this episode mama's doing the best that she can but i already told y'all last week that i just want her to pick no struggle she decides to cancel that nil article and not turn it in which frustrates her editor and also turns out to frustrate spencer because he didn't ask her to compromise her journalistic integrity or her artistic integrity for their relationship or for what he has going on with the team he feels like whatever is going to be the fall fallout is going to be the fallout she need to go ahead with it and while i receive that and i appreciate that 
I also want them to let this girl let this thing die because it started out from a very bad place. She started out getting information from a very nefarious way. Like she literally took personal information from her brother and cultivated into this story to become like some little pseudo vendetta for Spencer developing a relationship with, da with Davida. Then she realized she was all wrong about all of that. And then she kept going. And like, even in this episode, she mentions like she interviewed Wade's prom date from high school. It's like, girl, he's a senior in college now. What does that girl have anything to do with anything? And she mentions how it just got way too personal and it's gone to a really weird place. And I think that that's something real about that. I don't think it's anything wrong with her deciding not to move forward with this article, but everyone is like rallying around and like wanting to push her to do it. And I'm just like, let Olivia concede sometimes. Let Olivia take the damn L. Personally, I feel like it's way too much going on, which is why she's in the place that she is when she lost Jen. Like she's no longer Jen's sponsor because she was way too busy, has way too many things on her plate and is not balancing and showing up in the way that she needed to for her sponsee. Like, I think that it's a good idea that she dropped the article, even if it feels like she's taking something from herself. I think for me, I was really proud to see her say, you know what, I'm not gonna move forward with it. I'm gonna go ahead and scrap it. Because that to me, let me know that she is capable of putting others before herself. She is able to like take a step back and she's not so fixated or operating in a space like that's from her addictive personality where she just really can't drop something or just let it go. But it seems like everybody is rallying around her actually moving forward. And I think by the next episode, we're gonna see her pick back up with it. It's interesting to me though that when Olivia did do the article, it's putting a strain on their relationship. When Olivia is not doing the article, it's putting a strain on their relationship. So it's given very much so this article might be something that's pointing to something else that's happening within y'all's relationship and the article might not actually be the issue y'all might actually just have to get on the same page or figure out that y'all not on the same page in life and move forward accordingly everybody does the whole murder mystery thing and jj being the glue of this whole daggone group is very 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 annoyed with the fact that the friendship are all like breaking apart which we get but honestly <sighs> Sometimes you gotta let it go. You Not everybody keeps their same friends from high school and from middle school, and you really have to grow and, and separate, especially if y'all are growing into being different people or not growing. Or if some of y'all are regressing and some of y'all are growing, you have to go ahead and release. Like I loved all of the scenes that we saw with JJ. I love his idea with the murder mystery, and he's saying that everybody killed him. He died from the fact that all his friends like went their separate ways and nobody cared about each other 10 years down the line. And I'm like, that's cute and all, but part of me is like, JJ, you also need to find some fulfillment for yourself self and in yourself and not looking for validation or support from all these other people who have all their other things going on in their lives like it's one thing to cultivate community and that's great you need that but you also have to be able to do something and sustain yourself and while jj's talking about he died from the fact of his broken heart from all his friends from high school not being around 10 years down the line or like missing this movie it's cute and all it's like jj go ahead and let it go because you got narcissists in your group you got selfish people in your group we got people who want to save everybody in the group like there's people who just need to work on certain things and some of these people we're learning more and more as we watch these episodes their personalities aren't really good for each other the personalities that we are see cultivated in this daggone vortex of a group actually are clashing and some of the people are put together but innately their personalities or their natural preferences are bringing out the worst in another person and in that case you need to separate and that's it that's all them trying to make us see that Asher and Spencer are family that is never going to be the case no matter how many times that they say it they are not family they didn't come from they didn't start off well like y'all like to tell me about Jordan and Simone which I think is interesting the way that y'all word that but like when we met Asher he was racist full stop <laughs> like even now him leaning into his white privilege he doesn't even realize some of the racial undertones that he has with some of the things that he's saying it's like that's not something that you just ignore if he doesn't like adjust and learn from the things that he got going on and his expectation and his entitlement that's something that you're you're putting on Spencer or you're putting on, on other people of color that are his friends that they're now having to subject themselves to and he ain't doing nothing about what kind of bullshit friendship is that all the while that Layla and Jordan are cultivating a great platonic relationship, now he's hit with the with the burden of like, oh, all of his feelings for <laughs> Layla are actually true and Simone was right and now she got to deal with it. And like, maybe she was really just looking for this platonic love that she sees in Jordan. Maybe she was really just looking for a safe space and not a relationship. And now she got to deal with and handle Jordan's damn emotions. Like all of this is a lot. And again, I love JJ. I really wish we got to see more of his story, but 
I ain't really feeling everybody staying together and staying tight knit because this little friendship circle is given very much so it's time to take a break. The best part of the episode, I think, is um, Patience seeing Coop in a new light. Well, actually, Coop seeing Coop in a new light. Her embracing her job with Laura and really diving into this, and you're seeing the light come back in her eyes, and you're seeing her be passionate about something and being able to speak to things that she really deeply desires has totally shifted Coop's whole aura, and it's attractive, and we see Patience really, really lean back into that attraction, and they, you know get together by the end of the episode and she's really really excited about it i'm happy for them i think that they definitely will reunite and it makes sense of like the space in which they're reuniting because in all honesty the reason why they broke up to begin with was because of cool she wasn't doing nothing she didn't want nothing like sis was giving very much so bottomless pit vibes <laughs> it's like girl what am i supposed to do with that i'm supposed to be in a relationship with that and i'm steady trying to throw things resources at you i'm trying to help you i'm trying to uplift you and everything is bad everything feels off everything is wrong it's like at some point you're gonna have to tap out because she has to want things in life for herself and it's not until now that Coop has cultivated some type of deep desire to move forward and some wants in life and now she's back or better than ever so maybe patience and Coop can be back and better than ever all right y'all that is my full breakdown for the episode I think I said more than I actually wanted to say <laughs> again I'm annoyed and going into the season finale ready to lay everybody out and I'm ready for all these friends to go their separate ways because I'm tired I'm sick and tired but let me know your thoughts, theories, and comments in the comment section down below. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my All American Universe content. If you want exclusive content and a little bit more, a little co further connected to me, be in my IG close friends as well as get exclusive content here. Like the two hour video I have on the channel right now for members only that talks about Damon and Thea and their relationship and how it can wind up being one of the greatest ships in the All American Universe. Go ahead and join the membership. You can join by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button and support the channel in a deeper way and get access to all of this dope exclusive content as well as a member's badge that will automatically be added to your screen name whenever you post a comment or you're in the chats of my lives. I cannot wait to see what y'all are saying in the comment section. Shout out to all the new members who recently joined. I love y'all very much. I love the subscribers as well. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.